I kind of want you to step away from those other enhanced sexual kind of experiences and detox yourself for something like 90 to 120 days and attempt to normalize sexuality first. And I think if you can accomplish that, then we can start a slow relearning process of actually what sex is and what, you know, it isn't. Um, but this guy's is a huge problem now. And I pass it to you guys because one of the things we're seeing is uh, people in their 20s, teenagers who grew up in the age of high definition available online pornography who have a really false view of what sex is. And and I think this spills over into the larger culture. We're seeing the Me Too movement and a conversation mm-hmm. about what does consent look like. And sexuality is at the forefront of the national conversation. And what this guy's writing about, I think, is a factor in all this. What do you guys think? <laughs> <laughs> I- I agree. I don't know if I have a whole lot to add to that. I mean, that's that's very well said, Jim. Um, and I think, you know, with the especially with the romantic idea of like even what a relationship looks like. Um, uh, you know, we were kind of talking about this the other day when talking about like the Me Too movement and everything and, and how um, Hollywood has kind of created this idea of what romance looks like. And romance looks like standing outside in the rain with a boombox over your head for the yeah. person that you really love. John Cusack. Yeah. But in real life, that's creepy. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> Don't so do that. Yeah. yeah. So there's H4 this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I so, think Sydney has stories. Yeah. <laughs> I think she has so stories. So there's this uh, this contrast between what makes a really good movie and what is acceptable in reality. So, Sydney, bring some female life experience to this. Um, this, I'm sure, <laughs> affects men. It affects women. But what are your thoughts on this caricature reality? Nick's pointing out it can happen in romance, too, and in sexuality. What do you think about that? Yeah, well, I have a couple of thoughts. But um, what was coming to my mind in this, too, is like maybe even from the other perspective is that, you know, if if they're creating a fantasy of this person, you know, um, I'm just also thinking about a, a client that I worked with in the past who, you know, had a fantasy of this type, right? But he had a a really amazing girlfriend too, but she could never live up to the fantasy that he had in his head, you Mm -hmm. know, and, uh, and that's hard for the other person as well. You know, if, if they're putting this, um, you know, this object on a, on a pedestal, how does the real person even, you know, compete with that, you Mm -hmm. know? And so, you know, it can be affected on both sides. Um, but I think awareness is the key, you know, everything you said, you know, going back to baseline, you know, and being just being aware that, that that's not healthy, that's not normal and start challenging those, you know, belief systems. But I had a, a mentor that once told me, you know, like you take it back to the baseline, but they said, you know, can you please yourself without mm-hmm. anybody else? Because right. if you can't learn to even please yourself, you know, without porn or without the, all these things, then how can you please somebody else or how can you know, somebody else please you. Yeah. And they sort of take it back to the baseline. That's self-awareness. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, one thing that she just said, Nick, which I love so much is this idea of the fantasy. And, and it goes back to what Nick was saying about how it's not true. Somebody made the joke that if 50 shades of gray uh, took place in a trailer park, it'd be a very different story. <laughs> it's like, it's a guy's not a millionaire. He's just this guy in a trailer park who beats you up. <laughs> like, yeah. This is not the same story right. anymore. Right. Now it's the stuff we see on cops. Yeah. And like, I just think that there's this, this fictionalization of sexuality and you know, there's, there's room for it. Right. And that's, that's entertainment, right? Just like mm-hmm. we all enjoy a good rom-com. Um, sure. Nick more than most people. And, and so like, you know, that's fun. And, and we, you know, we like it and it's cheerful. And it's like, oh, that's cute. But we also know that that's not real life. And so when our next relationship doesn't look like that, we don't hold our relationship to that standard. But in sexuality, I think also people don't talk about sex very much. Mm-hmm. The three of us would probably sit down and talk about relationships and have lunch. But we probably wouldn't talk about the last time we had sex and how was that and what right. was normal. Unless you, know? you were girls. Yeah. But, OK. Do the girls do this? OK, good. I'm glad somebody is. Because Nick will never tell me. You know, I ask him every day. I said, are you satisfied in your sex life? And he's like, Jim. Can we please just get back to work? <laughs> this is harassment. You know, Sydney, talk to him. You know, help him understand that I'm just a caring friend. All right. Well, thank you for everybody who's written in. These were great. Thank you, Sydney, for being our guest yes. and helping us out with that. Oh, that finally. was wonderful. <laughs> finally, you. a real therapist in the room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. God, yeah. I was getting so sick of listening to us. And so, for our listeners, if you would like to write in and uh, voice your opinion on which one of us should be replaced by. Sydney, yes. Please feel free to do yes. that. Yes. Uh, 
<laughs> now, Jim, you uh, you had a shout out. I do have a shout out. Um, if you like this podcast, that means you're interested in mental health. And uh, I would recommend another podcast to you, Noggin Notes, uh, with my buddy Jake Wiskirchen. Um, he's uh, the warden of the north, I like to say. He's up there in the godforsaken tundra of Reno, Nevada, which we do not speak of. Uh, here in Las Vegas, but besides that, I like him. He's a good guy, good thoughts. Strongly recommend picking up Noggin Notes as a podcast. You will not regret it. All right, that's all the time we've got for this week's session. Thank you to those who contributed to our show today. We really appreciate it. Remember, pod therapy isn't something you should keep all to yourself. Help us reach others by sharing this episode. You can find us at podtherapy.net, on Facebook at facebook.com slash podtherapy, or tweet to us at podtherapyguys on Twitter. Help the people in your life by checking in on them and offering an open ear. You never know whose life might be changed by simply being available. I'm Nick Tanchman. I'm Jim Jobin. Thanks, and we'll see you for your appointment next week.